in color. The continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Not so long ago, Chris Weber used to wait anxiously for the first snow of winter. Blind since his childhood, he found great pleasure in feeling the cold fall of the flakes on his face. Now, Chris hardly knows that snow at last has come to Peyton Place. His mind is bursting with hatred of his brother Lee. Chris is convinced that Lee murdered Ann Howard. He is further convinced that Lee must be punished. I need to practice. If it's too early for you, Ada, I can come back later. Practice all you want. Your coffee's up there on top. Thanks. Oh, good morning, Ada. Chris? I already contributed to the policeman's Christmas benefit. <laughs> Ada, if you weren't such a big-hearted, friendly barkeep, I wouldn't be giving you this kind of service. Service? Listen, it's not every day that a gentleman of my rank personally makes the rounds to renew handgun licenses. Is the year up already? Yeah, up today. Oh, it's 7.50 this year, Ada. That stupid gun only cost me $20 five years ago. Now I gotta pay $7.50 for the license? That's right. Oh. Oh, Ada, I'll have to check the serial number on the gun. If ever I hear of you using this thing, I'll get very upset. Believe me, not as upset as I'll get. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, there's your receipt, Ada. I'll, uh, I'll bring the license in a day or two. Uh, thanks, Ed. I do appreciate the special service. Okay, see you later. Oh, everything all right, Chris? Everything's just fine, Sergeant Goddard. Thank you. Good. See you later. I get a cup of coffee, Ada, and spike it with something warming. Well, I'm going to go out and beat the bushes for a job today, Ada. Can't live on love alone. Hey, this newspaper here, you know, it's just full of opportunity. Senior microelectronic systems engineer, Bachelor of Science and Electrical Engineering degrees plus five years experience. Oh, shucks, I've only got four. Quality control engineer, computer engineer, mechanical engineer, optical engineer, hydraulic engineer, civil engineer, and engineering supervisor. You know, it doesn't appear I can qualify for any of these jobs, Ada. Unless I find some sucker to put me through college. Morning, Chris. Hey, uh, I wanted to talk to you this morning, but oh, you left so early. What was your hurry? I can't stand being in the same room with you. You know, I, I followed you around for a while, but, well, I was afraid you were going to get in some kind of trouble. And all you did was wander around town like a little lost pup. Why don't you get out of here and go find that, that job for yourself? Yes, ma'am. I don't want any trouble. Not anymore. I heard you, uh, moving around in your room all last night. Chris, why don't you find something to use up all that steam you're building up like, well, like beating a punching bag to death or something before you blow up, little brother? Take care, huh? Why do you? 
you stay in the same house with that, that... I'm afraid to leave him alone with Sandy, that's why. He'd like me to go, he'd like me to run, Ada. But he can't get his way all the time. Nobody can win all the time, not even my big brother, Lee. He'll find that out soon enough. I remember when you used to come running down on those stairs every night to meet me. That was a long time ago. Look at it. All of Grandfather's belongings, his books, his letters, his paintings, things he collected over a lifetime, things that... things that'll never be replaced, all gone in one night. It's better that they're gone, Rodden. It's a clean break with the past. Everything about this house was an anachronism. Belong to another era. An era that's finally ended. Is that what you see, Dad? The era of, of Martin Payton lying in, in ashes? You put it very succinctly. Is this some kind of a, of a symbol to you, an omen, that Martin Payton's era is over and yours is now beginning? Not mine. Yours. If you're swift enough and strong enough. I'm sorry, sir. All I see here is waste. And what do you think Stephen Cord sees? What do you suppose he was thinking about when he carried your grandfather out of this house? Saving someone's life. Martin Payton's life. Where were you, Rod? Where was I supposed to be? Here, you, Rod. Is that why you wanted me to move back to this house? So I could be that great big boy scout in the sky and swoop down whenever there was an opportunity to do something that I might, I might be rewarded for. I know it's fashionable to mock your parents these days, but I'm thinking of you. I, uh... I'm trying to explain something to you. I know Stephen Cord. My life was the same kind of struggle. A struggle to get what you and Norman were born with. All right, you go ahead. Stick to your dream world, but don't come to me for help when Stephen races back into this house and slams the door in your face. Does it always have to be a contest? You and Grandfather, Stephen and me? Yes, it does. And whom did Stephen finally marry? Do you think that was a coincidence? <clears throat> you know, that's, that's the kind of thing that only you could say. And that's why I said it. You aren't Martin Payton's oldest grandson anymore. Stephen Cord is. And you weren't around when Martin Payton had to be rescued from what could have been his funeral pyre. Stephen Cord was. When this house went up in flames, it wasn't just the end of an era, Rodney. It was the end of a world. Your world. Now, there's a new world, and Stephen Cord's creating it. We can't let that happen, Rod. We'd both lose. Both of us. Dad? What about Norman? Yes, yes, of course, Norman. We'd all lose. You and Norman, and I. And I assure you, any delay was unrelated to my courtroom involvement. It would be very unwise to pursue negotiations until a full title search had been completed. I have the papers presently in hand. And I'm giving the matter my fullest attention. Yours sincerely. Stephen Cord.
Now, why does each client think you're so unique? Huh? I had a call from Mr. Payton. He phoned personally from the hospital and asked me to come and see him. So my new grandfather's already starting to fish. Do you want me to go? Well, you're dressed for the occasion. I wouldn't have had time to go home and change after I saw you. You knew my answer. <laughs> okay, go ahead. But don't swallow any bait, no matter what he says. Don't commit me to anything. But don't be afraid. You can handle it. No, that's not it. I was thinking about when we went back to the house after the fire, what you said to me then. That I wanted the house? Mm -hmm. What is it? Stephen, you say not to commit you to anything. But you are committed by wanting the house. By setting that as our goal. Our first goal. And on my own terms, Betty. Not on the old man's terms, whatever they are. You said you were with me. I said that and I meant it. So if he starts to probe, what does Stephen want? What is he after? Is he going to be reasonable? No bargains. Remember that. I just want you to be sure, that's all I ask. Because when you've taken the first step, there's no turning back. Well, then don't take it. Fence with him. Trade all the friendly insults you want, but no major decisions in your name or mine. The girl in the trench coat again, huh? Why not? It's for both of us, isn't it? Uh-huh. It's for both of us. to see a man pick at his food. Too bad. I cut the ham extra thick and paid special attention to the potato chips. <sighs> well, my stomach is tied in knots today. Well, relax for a minute. Oh, just like that, huh? Bad news about your grandfather? No, no, he's doing all right. Well, that's good. What about the house? Well, the upstairs isn't in bad shape, but the downstairs got burned and charred pretty good. Well, I guess they'll be able to fix it, though. Yeah, you can fix just about anything. You're in need of a little repair yourself. I'm sorry, but there are no spare parts of that. You're a very sensitive person, Rod. Yeah, I, I shattered the wrong note. And a sensitive person needs another sensitive person around to, to talk to and uh, feel sensitive about together. Wait, say that again. You and Allison, for example. Oh. I mentioned her deliberately, Rod, as an example. Two sensitive people. Uh, Rita, correct me if, if uh, I misunderstood you in, in any way here. What you're trying to do, what, what's the word, uh, is, is make a match, isn't it? You're, you're, trying to, uh, you're trying to make a match for me, aren't you? Well, Rod, you really need somebody. Please, no matchmaking. Those things never work. You no, know that. Norman, I worked out, didn't we? And that didn't make any sense at all if you wrote it down on paper. Mrs. Harrington, there's only one thing in this world that makes sense. Any sense at all, and that's you and my brother together. Hey, and I, I like your drugstore, even if I'm not hungry. Can you put this on the tab? Sure. You know why I came over here to talk to you? No. Ask you about Rachel Wells? Mm -hmm. 